This video is a short demo of the Tenant Portal within CloudPath. The Tenant Portal is designed for use in an MDU or multiple dwelling unit setting. Example of MDUs include apartments, college dorms, assisted living facilities, marinas, RV parks, anywhere where there's communal living. The mechanism that residents and guests of residents will use to gain access is Dynamic Pre-Shared Keys. Dynamic Pre-Shared Keys, or DPSKs for short, work in a way similar to conventional pre-shared keys like you might have used to connect to a consumer grade router. The resident enters the key into their device one time when they connect to the network. With CloudPath, they connect to their own personal VLAN within the MDU environment. The DPSK is unique to each resident, but they use the same DPSK across all of their devices. This yields important benefits both in terms of security and user experience over conventional PSKs where all users share the same key. The Tenant Portal lets each resident self-serve in managing access to their personal VLAN, which coexists with other residents' VLANs on the MDU network. This includes granting and revoking guest access. They can also change the DPSK and view devices that they have onboarded onto the network. Because a resident has control over and visibility into devices on the network, IT, which often is a managed service fire in an MDU setting, does not have to get involved. All right, so let's log into a CloudPath system now and see what that experience is like from a tenant as well as from an administrator. To configure the property management portal, there are two requirements that you have to complete before enabling that access. One of them is actually providing an API key. So I've logged into CloudPath here. I'm gonna click on API keys under configuration and once I do that, I can click on the plus sign or add API key here to create the API key. Give it a name. And I can adjust the expiration date here if I like, and then just click on save. Now, the other thing that you will need is to create a DPSK pool. So the tenant portal is all based on DPSK pools within CloudPath. We need to create one before we can enable tenant access. So let's click on DPSK pools. And I don't have any pools created. If I had one created, I could use that in access. Let's assume that you don't, and this is the first time setting it up. So I'm gonna click on create DPSK pool. We're gonna give it a name. Um, and any DPSK that's created through the tenant portal automatically for your uh, users will uh, retain these characteristics. So when we generate a passphrase, you know, we can make it as complex as we like or as simple as we like. For, uh, you know, terms of this demo and your end users can change the DPSKs themselves anyways. Let's make it a little bit simpler. So we'll make it eight characters and we'll do uh, a numeric pass, numeric passphrase. And then we can apply some restrictions. So SSIDs are required here. Um, and I'm going to put in the SSID for that property that I'm going to create. Now, if I do set an uh, expiration date or device count limit, this will happen at the global property pool level. So any DPSKs that you create would have those restrictions on them. Um, also, uh, if you edit a DPSK after creating it, you can change these restrictions too. So you may have some DPSKs that have a certain expiration date and a, a, a certain device count limit that is completely different than what you create in the pool. 